Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Memories, where we commemorate the memories of those lost and memories gained. I'm your host, Luke Secor. This week we'll be taking a look at the life of Glenn Vandergalian, who died of a heart attack on August 11, 2012, a mere three months ago. At 51 years old, Glenn Vandergalian's life was unexpectedly taken on Saturday, August 11th, the date of his wedding anniversary. He passed away in his home in Minnesota. He left a wife and four children whom he had dedicated his life to. Today, however, we celebrate Glenn's life. He was a good man in every sense of the word. Glenn may be gone, but he left behind many cherished memories. This week, I would like to welcome to the show, Josh Houston. Josh has been a family friend of Glenn's for over 20 years. Thanks for coming on the show today, Josh. Thanks, Luke, it's, it's a pleasure. All right, could we just start off the show by you just painting a picture of what Glenn's personality was like? Yeah, yeah. Glenn uh, was a very fun guy. He was lively and energetic, uh, and he was always the one to initiate, you know, fun events or fun activities or, or even fun pranks at times. Now, what were some of the things that you feel like he really enjoyed doing and spending his time with? Three things I would say summed up Glenn's life. Um, first and foremost, obviously, family. He loved his, his wife, Teresa, very much, um, but he loved being a father. Uh, he loved his son, Jacob, as well as, as his three daughters very much. Um, the second thing I would say would be sports. Um, Glenn loved coaching sports, whether it was his, his son's sports or even my sports at time. He, uh, he also liked playing sports, even though he wasn't the most athletic person in the whole world. Um, but he mostly liked watching sports, uh, whether that was his own kids or, or Minnesota professional sports like the Vikings or the Twins. Now, could you tell me a little bit more about his life and background? Yeah, he was born in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, a, a small town. He was born to two wonderful parents, and he was one of, one, one of eight children. Um, he grew up on a farm, so that was a fun thing for him to experience. And then he went to college at University of Wisconsin La Crosse, where he uh, studied computer science. Uh, it was there that he met his, his wife to become, Teresa. Now, what's one of the fondest memories that you have of uh, Glenn's time on this earth? Yeah, I have, I have many fond memories with Glenn, but, but the, most, the most fond memory I have with him would be our vacation that we took in the summer of 2007 uh, to Colorado. Uh, it was near the end of the month of, month of July, so the weather was really nice, and we rented this, this chalet house in the mountains of Breckenridge uh, for a relatively inexpensive price because it was the off-season, the tourist off-season. Um, we did a, an array of activities like hiking and biking and even whitewater rafting, um, but the, fun, the most fun thing we did uh, would be every night after a few hours of, of the Disney Channel, thanks to Jacob's younger sisters, we would uh, turn off all the lights once it got dark and we would play a rousing game of, of hide and go seek in, in the pitch black where you couldn't see a thing. Glenn would find the, the craziest spots to hide from, from hanging onto the ceiling fan or the rafters or the, the air conditioning ducts to, to down underneath the deck or the craziest spots. We actually have a picture of mm. uh, this Colorado trip you were describing of you your families huh. playing cards together. Was this something that your families did together often? Yeah, my family has a long history of playing card games. Uh, and then that love transitioned over to the Vandergalian family as well. Uh, we spent many holidays together and we still do. And most of the time it's spent uh, either playing games that we've invented or games that we will play forever games such as Ticket to Ride or Settlers of Catan or, or Mafia or Telephone Pictionary was one of Glenn's favorites. Hmm. He would, he would Picasso-like draw the, the perfect pictures, uh, making the next person have the simplest job in the world describing <laughs> that which he drew. Now, how did you get to know Glenn so well? Um, well, our, my parents and, his parent, or in, and Glenn and his wife, uh, they met in their mid-20s at a small church in Minnesota. They both worked for the youth ministry, specifically the high school ministry. 
and that's where their friendship began. But then it wasn't until Glenn and Teresa moved to Japan that my parents went and visited them on multiple occasions uh, where their best friendship developed. All right. And as we wrap things up here, if you feel that uh, Glenn could come back and just say one last mm. thing to you, what do you think it would be? Glenn would look at me and he would say, uh, Josh Bagash, uh, Jim's a pretty, pretty awesome dude, isn't he? And I would say yes. And he would say, well, keep on loving him for me. Excellent. Mm. Unfortunately, that's all the time that we have for this segment. Thank you so much for joining mm. us, Josh. But right now, we're going to send it over to Melinda Hall, another Vandergalian family friend. She is here to show us some of the most treasured artifacts Glenn had in his life. Thank you for joining us, Melinda. Thank you. So as you can see here, we have some of the things that Glenn Vandergalian held dearest to his heart. First and foremost, he loved God. He treasured his Bible, and he had this one for a very long time. Every morning on the way to work, he would either listen to the Bible on tape or his Promise Keeper CD. We also have his prayer list at the time of his death. Glenn also loved his wife, Teresa, very much. They were married for 28 years. Their wedding was on August 11th, 1984, and this is a picture of the special day. He also loved sports, especially pro football. Um, he was an avid Minnesota Vikings fan, despite growing up in Wisconsin and much to the dismay of his seven brothers and sisters. One of his favorite memories was meeting Adrian Peterson, his favorite player in the NFL. And this is the jersey that Adrian signed for him when they met. He also had a passion for kids, and one of the ways he showed that was by coaching middle school basketball. This is the whistle that he used in his most recent season. When he wasn't working, he loved to watch um, TV shows and movies. So I hope these things have given you a little glimpse into who Glenn was, um, but unfortunately that's all we have time for today. Back to Luke. Thank you so much, Melinda. That was very touching. And to everyone in the audience, thank you for joining us today. I encourage you all to cherish your loved ones. It is never certain what the future holds. Sometimes all you have left is the memories. We'll see you next time.